Type 2 diabetes is a serious disease that can have life-threatening consequences if left untreated. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of diabetes and what you need to know about type 2 diabetes to ramp up your health. Three, two, one, go! Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez is a Mexican physician based in New York City. Type 2 diabetes is a serious disease that can have life-threatening consequences if left untreated. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of diabetes and what you need to know about type 2 diabetes to ramp up your health, prevent it, and take care of your loved ones. Vámonos! Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Mao. I'm a triple board certified physician in New York City. And today, I'm going to talk about something that I truly love, type 2 diabetes. This is a serious disease that affects millions of people all over the world. There are three different types of diabetes, type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. But today, we're going to focus our entire attention on type 2 diabetes and how to diagnose it, treat it, and do our best to reverse it and improve it. It is a common misconception that diabetes only affects people who are obese or overweight, while it is true that people who have overweight or obesity are at much higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. This myth disregards the other factors that can contribute to the development of this chronic health condition. Studies have shown that genetics also play a significant role. But what is type 2 diabetes? Type 2 diabetes is a disease that affects how the body uses sugar. Sugar or glucose is the main source of energy for the body and it comes from the food we eat. Diabetes occurs when the body does not produce enough insulin or when it cannot use insulin properly. Insulin is a hormone that helps the body use up sugar for energy. It is produced by the pancreas and it's important for controlling blood sugar levels. Insulin helps the body also store energy from food and use it for growth and repair. People with diabetes have problems controlling their blood sugar levels because they do not produce enough insulin or they cannot use insulin properly. The most common age for diagnosing diabetes is after the age of 40. However, diabetes can occur at any age. Now, speaking about insulin, I'm sure you've heard of insulin resistance, right? What is insulin resistance? This is a condition in which the body does not respond properly to insulin. Insulin resistance can lead to type 2 diabetes and other health problems. People with insulin resistance have trouble converting food into energy. As a result, their bodies start to store fat instead of using it for energy. This can lead to weight gain, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. As you can see, we need to avoid it at all costs. There is no single cause of insulin resistance. However, there are some things that can increase your risk of developing this condition, including obesity, lack of exercise, smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, age, and genes, unfortunately. What are the most common symptoms of diabetes? The most common symptoms of diabetes are excessive thirst, frequent urination, tiredness, and weight loss. However, some people may not have any symptoms at all. Muy importante. Although type 2 diabetes can occur at any age, it is most common in middle age and older adults. However, children and adolescents are also at risk for developing the condition, especially if they are overweight or obese. Additionally, people with a family history of type 2 diabetes or certain ethnicities such as Hispanic, Latino, African American may also have an increased risk for developing this condition. Similarly, women who have had diabetes during pregnancy also known as gestational diabetes, are also more likely to develop type 2 diabetes later in life. So in a nutshell, who should get tested? If you have any of the risk factors for type 2 diabetes, experts recommend that you get tested for the condition on a regular basis. These risk factors include being age 35 or older, being from a certain ethnic group such as Hispanic, uh, Asian American, etc. Or if you have obesity or you're a little bit overweight and if you've had gestational diabetes. And remember, the sooner you begin treatment, the better your chances of conquering the condition and avoiding complications. What are the tests used to diagnose and what are the numbers? If your doctor suspects you have diabetes, they will order a test to confirm the diagnosis. There are several different tests that can be used to detect diabetes and each one uses a different measurement. 
The most commonly used test is the fasting plasma glucose test, which measures your blood sugar levels after you have fasted for at least eight hours. However, this test is not always accurate. So your doctor may also order a oral glucose tolerance test. This test involves drinking a sugary drink and then having your blood sugar levels checked periodically over the next two hours. If your blood sugar levels remain high during this time, it is likely that you have diabetes. Another option is the A1C test, which measures your average blood sugar levels over the past three months. This test is often used to diagnose type 2 diabetes and it provides a more accurate picture of your long-term blood sugar control. No matter which test is used, your doctor will usually order a second one to confirm the diagnosis. And to make it easy for you, diagnosis is made when your A1C is more than 6.5% or your fasting plasma glucose is more than 126 milligrams per deciliter or if you get a random serum glucose test, which is 200 milligrams per deciliter and above. Now, can diabetes be prevented? Are you ready for some good news? You can do a lot to lower your chances of developing type 2 diabetes. The Diabetes Prevention Program was a major multi-center clinical research study that proved the power of prevention. Are you paying attention? The intervention involved a lifestyle change program focusing on calorie reduction, eating healthier foods, and increasing physical activity by at least 150 minutes per week. So what were the results? Pre-diabetic participants who achieved weight loss, up to 5-7% to of weight loss of their body weight, reduced the risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 58%. Can you believe this? This is amazing, 58%. It's a big change. Follow-up studies have shown that even after 10 years, the participants were still 33% less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Insane numbers. And this brings a lot of hope. Now, let's talk about the power of muscle to prevent diabetes. Although the DPP showed that lifestyle change program could reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 58%, not everyone is able to make these changes. For some people, aerobic exercises may not be enough and they may need to add resistance training in their routine in order to improve their blood sugar control. In a very interesting study, researchers look at the effect of cholesterol, triglycerides, glucose, A1C, uh, insulin and oral glucose challenge in people with type 2 diabetes. The study involves 17 male and females who were sedentary and they had type 2 diabetes. And they underwent six weeks of whole body resistance training, you know, lifting weights, doing squats, growing your booty. The results of this study are pretty cool. After resistance training, there was an improved glycemic control as well as increased lean body mass and reductions in triglyceride levels, total cholesterol, and body fat. This just goes to show that resistance training is an important part of a healthy lifestyle and can prevent a whole host of health problems. So if you haven't already, get out there and start lifting some weights. Your body will thank you. There are many important dietary changes that can help improve blood sugar control in people with type 2 diabetes. In order to achieve better blood sugar control, it is important to focus on eating whole unprocessed foods that are low in sugar and high in fiber. Some excellent food choices for people with diabetes include vegetables, fruit, lean proteins, healthy fats, and whole grains. It is also important to avoid foods that are high in added sugar, such as candy, cake, and soda. Additionally, it is important to spread out your carbohydrate intake throughout the day instead of eating a lot of carbohydrates all at once. This will help keep your blood sugar more controlled and stable throughout the day. One of my favorite studies is the Rotterdam study. This study has found that a plant-based diet may help to prevent insulin resistance, pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. The study, which was conducted over a period of 12 years, found that thousands of participants who ate a lot of whole grains, veggie, fruits, walnuts, etc., were less likely to develop insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. The findings suggest that a plant-based center diet may help to lower the risk of these conditions. This is good news for those looking to adopt a healthier lifestyle, and it means that making simple changes in your diet can have a profound impact on your health. Now, you do not have to go completely vegan or vegetarian, but you do have to make sure to eat plenty of fruits, veggies, legumes, healthy fats, whole grains, and olive oil. 
Now let's debunk some myths. Myth number one, pre-diabetes always lead to diabetes. This is a myth, thank God. Listen, it's all a matter of risk. If you have pre-diabetes, your risk of developing diabetes is definitely higher, but not a sentence. In this video, you're learning how to avoid pre-diabetes turning into full-blown diabetes. Myth number two, are there any natural remedies for type 2 diabetes? At present, there is no medical remedy for diabetes. Thus, any products that purport to cure the illness are being deceptive. A majority of herbal or natural remedies may offer insignificant effects and in some cases even be dangerous. So friends, beware. Myth number three, sodas and other sugary drinks cause diabetes. Many people think that sugar causes diabetes. It's super understandable, but this is not quite true. There's some truth to it, but it's not quite true. Sugar does play a crucial role in diabetes, but it is not the cause of it. I mean, things are complex as always, but research shows that drinking soda regularly is linked to a heightened chance of developing type 2 diabetes. So therefore, it's best to err on the side of caution and switch out your sodas for more aguas frescas this time around or coffee. Coffee is always the right answer. Myth number four. People with diabetes require special foods. No, you don't need special foods. Foods with special diabetes-friendly claims may still raise blood glucose levels and be more expensive. A healthy meal plan for people with diabetes is generally the same as healthy eating for anyone. In fact, there are a lot of different eating plans that can help you manage your diabetes. In general, a healthy eating plan for diabetes will include uh, non-starchy vegetables, limit added sugar, swap refined grains for whole grains, and prioritize whole foods over highly processed foods when possible. Yup, yeah, it's that easy. Okay, let's do a summary. In order to prevent type 2 diabetes, it's important to live a healthy lifestyle, period. This includes making healthy dietary choices, getting regular exercise, and maintaining a healthy weight. Additionally, it is important to avoid foods that are high in added sugar and to spread out your carbohydrate intake throughout the day. Resistance training is also a vital part of a healthy lifestyle as it helps to increase muscle mass and reduce body fat. A plant-based diet may also help to prevent insulin resistance and prediabetes. So make sure you adopt some or all of these habits into your daily routine if you really want to stay away from diabetes. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel right now. Dr. Mao explains. Three, two, one. Dr. Mao Gonzalez is a Mexican physician based in New York City.